This is Dissy Beats. In the studio today, we got DJ Aftershock. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? Busy, busy. Yeah, I bet, man. Uh, busy season? Uh, season, uh, not right now, but as of April onwards, it gets really busy. Yeah, that's right. April till what? You would know. Uh, well, I did know. Okay. Not anymore. I'm retired now. It's normally crazy from about <laughs> April till the end of October. Yeah, that's good, man. Normally peak season, yeah. Yeah. For those people that are confused right now, what we're talking about is the DJ circuit. Uh, DJ Aftershock is a prominent DJ in the South Asian music scene here. And he just released a brand new single. That's right, yeah. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll talk about that. For sure. But uh, those of, for those people that don't know who you are, if you could just give a quick background. Who, uh, are, who, who am I? From? I'm just a normal human being uh, that loves to do what I love to do best, which is, uh, you know, DJ. I love music, Bangla music especially, and, um, you know, all types of Bollywood and R&B. And yeah, uh, you're, I'll give you props to the Bollywood. I learned a lot from that, actually. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's what I love, and I love doing it. And um, I think what's kept me going is, is the love from people you know people, people love what I do and, and it just keeps me going and you know it's not all about the money it's about passion as well at the end of the yeah day. 100% um, those of you that are still confused he does speak with a funny accent he is from originally from the UK now obviously you've pretty much half Canadian now there's a lot say. of confusion in it in this uh, interview <laughs> um, um, let's talk about um, back in the UK mm-hmm. you obviously was DJing there what mm-hmm. sort of like your influences in terms of you know, DJs or like, you know, like your parents, like how was that whole situation up there with mm, your mom? Being? Parents, man, they, <clears throat> from get go, right, they said to me, <laughs> I'm like, okay, got the degree and uh, obviously started DJing before, while I was at university. That's okay. when my passion actually for DJing actually kicked in. And then while I was studying my engineering degree, I actually started <clears throat> DJing on the side at university. Cool. Which um, enabled me to touch base with some road shows in the Midlands and went from there. Do you hear that, kids? The key was degree. Oh. Man's got his degree. Yes. So he studied and DJ. So I was. It, I guess it was a source of income for you. Yeah, while you were studying. Mm, at the beginning, it's it's hard to like I said. It, it's more passion than anything than money. Yeah. I mean, if you're doing it for a hobby and you really love doing what you what you basically it's in your blood right money will come by itself but the thing is at the, at the beginning you have to basically take it on as a hobby and a passion 100 yeah. percent, i think so and yeah. you have to continue that mindset forever as well once you let money take over that duck i'm down it's so. game over yeah game over it's funny you mentioned about the parents <laughs> i i had the same issue with my parents i think every this dj most of them do right mm-hmm. um i'll tell you at, when other people started saying to mom and dad like he's really good or blah blah he that even though today they still say to have DJ cut right mm-hmm, even, mm-hmm. but still I know in the back of their head they're proud that, at one point did they say you know what sound good like did they are they it, still it, on your case about no that? no it's all good now it's yeah. uh, now it's like um, well first I'll tell you at the beginning it was like oh you know DJ Kali Kanaya Lok Kaneki Sochil blah 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 you know basically my brother's a, a, a Pangra dancer Oh, so, that's double whammy now. So man. he's basically flying all around doing dancing for his <clears> big, uh, in, in England, they're quite big. Yeah. So now mom's like, to see the DJ I'm like, yeah, but you know, that's what we love doing. And, and people respect us for that. And, and mom and dad, in order, they, in, in return, they see that respect. Yeah. That's why Sada Munde, that interview, on Sada Munde, they got released. Right now, yeah. it's just completely turned. So that's good, though, man. It's nice. It's, you know what? It's nice having that. That support because it helps. Support comes after. Yeah, but, you know, like I, you know what? It's funny, like because you, anyone, like we, we all have haters, right? And people out there, oh, you're this, you're that, you're gone. But when it's your parents that say something, it hurts. Mm-hmm. So it's nice having that support. That's cool, man. That's really good on you. So, yeah. So we go from the UK. So what point did uh, what brought you out here then? Um, School, family, family. Really. Okay, cool. Yeah, moved over um, about ten years back. And from there on, uh, it was a big move. It was a huge move. All my friends and everybody, family, still back in England. Yeah. Um, just have a, you know, a few family members here, um, which helped a lot, and um, just progress slowly uh, from there. And it was actually, you know, when you say started from the bottom, that was yep. basically where I was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nobody well, knew anything. So talk. Uh, well, talk about that because I know obviously I know you from the DJing circuit. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did you get back into DJing here? <clears throat> um, was well, it a grind? I'm assuming it was a grind. 
Well, what you know what? Well, things sort of fell in place. I don't know where, where, whether I think I'm maybe <clears throat> destined to be a DJ or, you know, destined to entertain people yep. live and direct. But, you know, it was it was a, it was a time, uh, um, a phrase of you, I remember. Yeah, OK. Yeah, good I old, remember those phrase of you days. Called, yeah. called a good old yeah. Vancouver phrase of you hall. Yeah, yeah. I went to um, have a, I went to check that place out for a private event. OK. Um, this is when I f- eventually first moved. And um, the owner there, he told him my background and everything. Yep. And he goes, hey, I'm just looking for a DJ. Do you mind? coming in and I said no problem man I don't mind I love it it's in my blood we didn't even talk about money it was just a case of just come on if I like you you like me we'll talk money afterwards I said no problem man that's fine with me yep. and as of then it just like people came in and I DJed and like people like asking questions where's your business card who are you owner got calls and it just from there went escalated to the next level right so I, you know what I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask this just because I can and uh, do you think the British accent helped um British accent Being might have. I'm pretty sure it did. I'm just bugging. I'm pretty sure it did because at I'm the end of the day, bugging. no, no, it's. It, I think it did. I think it. I think it. 100. It does. Yeah, but your skills matter, man. And yeah. I, I've played with you enough times, so you know. So I know uh, English accent is a bonus, <laughs> but um, I mean, coming from England and seeing the style, the UK flavor of DJing. And, you know, incorporating that in your blood and bringing it here to a different country is probably what really took everything by scene. You know what? Let's talk about that because you <clears> came <throat> here from a... The UK scene is totally different. Mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody says. There's there's no... There's absolutely no similarities. Whether you have a setup A or setup B, which we'll talk about too. So when you came here and you basically <laughs> came to these functions, be honest, man. Like, Because I, I lived in England. When mm-hmm. I came back, I thought the DJing circuit here was garbage. Mm-hmm. I thought it was rubbish. Mm-hmm. I thought the DJs were absolutely crap mm-hmm. at the time, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Not because they're playing bad music. Mm-hmm. It's just what they represented. Yeah. You, yeah. So, so when you came over, right, and you're at this function, like what was your, what was your thought process? When I first that? came here, um, I think it was... Uh, 2004 to the, yeah, around that area yeah around that time basically you know no disrespect to any DJs in the industry in Canada but the thing is it was a complete nine day difference because I'm looking I'm coming to an event here in Canada in Vancouver and I'm looking for the DJ yep where's the setup where's <clears> the stage <throat> where's the presence and yeah. I, I get pointed to a little <laughs> As Mr. Amit Benissa puts it, a cubby hole, right? I'm like, well, I don't know why I get trouble and, for something. And I'm like, where are the DJs? De- they're over there. I'm like, nah, seriously. Yeah. And like, yeah, that's where the DJ. Uh, but how do they see the dance floor? How can they read what the crowd are doing? How, the, how can they incorporate the next song? How can they transition? How can they hype up the crowd yeah. from there? That's my questions in my head. I'm thinking, holy, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. So, and, and, and then, you know, I, I didn't plan to do anything, but from there on, I just did what I've learned back in the UK incorporated that style and I was the one who said no no I don't want to be there I want to be here and I'm going to move up on the stage and and people said what this guy's moving up on the stage they're laughing at me it's like why would you, you want to move up on the stage say what you want because I fought there's a time I would say before you came about five years prior where we were front and center mm-hmm. right and we were the show right or wrong doesn't matter and I then, didn't know anybody then as and well. Then, so. And then there was that stage when you came where we had to fight to get back on stage. Basically. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wouldn't know, know that. Know. Like, you know, like convince, I should say, right? Mm-hmm. And I have to thank you that you were one of the guys that were able to convince brides. Brides, I say brides, I say it, I don't care. Brides, because the grooms don't really give a shit, really. At the end of the day. <laughs> they don't, right? That, you know, we need to be on the stage to provide the excellent service. Mm-hmm. You if know. you're hiring a DJ, a DJ's responsibility so. is to make that party happen. And you're going to make it happen. You have to be right there where the yeah. crowd is elevated <laughs> yeah. on stage yeah. as per the UK. That's how we did it. And yeah. uh, I'm sorry, but that's that's the way but, it But, flows. you know, times have changed because now DJing is part of the strategic planning for the weddings now, I've mm-hmm. noticed. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll be going in the halls and there's, you know, the big elaborate setups. Definitely. Which I can credit you for officially yeah. bringing that, you know that sort of UK vibe over here and bring it to the forefront. I mean, we tried, but we're, you got to remember when we were doing it, we were, you know, it was at the point where it was just, there was nobody else. So it was really hard to sell it. But once someone like yourself got it mm-hmm. and the other DJs got it, then mm-hmm. it was like, okay, this is cool now, right? I'll tell you so, what really motivated me, motivated me more than one, man, is when 
I brushed my ideas to other people, other DJs in the industry. Yeah. And I said, listen, I said, I'm going to move up on the stage. And they're like, you what? No, that's not going to work, really? man. Really? I that's didn't not, know that. That's not going to work, bro. You're wasting your time. Oh, I'm going to form a road show. What's a road show? Uh, this is what a road show is. Uh, good luck, bro. Good luck. That, that's hey, that's we, a negativity I got We had this conversation. Here. We had this conversation and when you were going to start your road show. What did I say? Go ahead. I supported you 100%, yeah. didn't I? And there's people here yes. that just they basically just threw you down. And I just said, listen, I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm going <clears> to <throat> say something right now. You don't know till you try. Exactly. Right? And if you've tried it and you've done it and you failed, it's okay. You can look back 10 years and say, hey, man, I tried. And it didn't work. And that, right? That's been my whole thing since my career of DJing. I tried whatever I could. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you, most of my stuff failed. No, but, but you've at least got, I tried. Yeah, but you tried, and that's why you have yeah. a phenomenal name in Vancouver. You're oh, a pioneer, bro. That, You're a pioneer, right? So, yeah, along that. with other DJs here, so big ups. Appreciate that. So, we're going to get into your record, Mehfala. Mm-hmm. Mehfala. Yeah, talk about it. What was the process? Like, oh, how did it all come about? The process, yeah. It was a long time. Really? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, it took a long while. Obviously, it's my first track, debut single, right? So yep. I'm new to the music industry. Like I, I'm not on the production side of things. Yeah, so okay. I'm not yeah. just going to step up and, and and just throw everybody down, right? I mean, everybody's done a great job releasing their music. You know, some local artists here as well doing a fantastic job. Yeah. But I don't have that time where I can bang out a track in what four or five months. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm a guy who's going to take my time because I have a lot of personal, you know, other things going on, and um, I will perfect things and then I'll release. You know, yeah, for sure. Rush on it. No, I totally, I totally and agree. I can honestly say right now, I've got like, I have got seven tracks lined up, and oh, Mefla wow. was one of them. Mefla was one of them. That's so cool. I wanted to get everything ready, right, before yeah. I start promoting. And, and so is this like kind of like the trial, see how it goes, or these are coming out regardless? No, these are these are done, man. That's, okay, that's like, good. All I, all I got to do is videos. Yeah, that, 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 is there a video guy out there? Give me a shout, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I man. need somebody local, you know. Give me a shout. That's the panga as a video. Video has yeah. to be good though. I, I gotta, I gotta admit, your video for for. I'm um, let's I'm um, let's talk Van City because that's really for a lower mainland Vancouver product was absolutely dope. Like it I was heard really that from good. other people. Yeah, it, it's really cool. It was it was very entertaining. It has and to it, be, and it's cool because you know I, I I know Gary, you know I know Marky, so it mm-hmm. it was nice seeing a different type of video because you could have put cars and girls any time of the day yeah, right you yeah, know what I mean but yeah. there's, I, I really like the intro no, I wanted a, I wanted a story and and, yeah. and uh, my director Mr. Jack but well wicked wicked job yeah he's, he's from good. Toronto yeah. flew him down and uh, he was the man for me and he directed it all and that was his idea and I loved it and he goes we need to hire a mummy daddy we need to hire dancers we need this we need that I said no problem man no problem. So. No, that's cool, man. So, I mean, it's fair to say that you had a good team on mm-hmm. this. Wicked team. It's a two-day shoot, um, four days. And uh, like I said, it took ages because Monarchy's obviously in England. Yeah. Jag's in Toronto. I'm in Vancouver. It just put everything together. You know, Jigsaw Puzzle took such a long time. But then Speed came into the picture like a couple of months back. And then we had to like sign deal with them. That takes time. Yeah. So we in yeah. India, yeah. <laughs> so That's India, good. England, Toronto, Vancouver, all collaborating for one track. So uh, record's been released in India too? It's all done? It came out through Speed Records India, yeah. Cool. How did how was the response? Oh, really good. Yeah. It's That's played, good. Uh, it's, it's on all the... Um, Punjabi channels Punjab to be message I had track Bob with the brother <laughs> that must be so cool though yeah. man so it's, it's nice when it's nice when people say that and uh, uh, I'm like no yeah, no problem people from local Vancouver reached out I said hey you know we want to work with you and stuff and you know it opens a lot oh, of doors oh here sure. come the crows I'm yeah. just joking yeah. it opens up a lot of doors but you got to be uh, picky and choosy who you work with right so I think so I mean you know like you said your your time is valuable right like you know I've, I've met your son son <laughs> Aryan you know beautiful child so, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a superstar, but only when I'm a daddy. That, I that, told that, you, right? That, no, hundred percent, man. Right, that's my full time, first priority, right? And then everybody, everybody, everything else, should I say, takes uh, precedence afterwards. No, no, for sure, man. I, I'm a father too. I totally understand where you're coming from. So let's get into the track, Marky DJ Aftershock, right here on DC Beats. We'll be right back. Welcome back to DC Beats. This is DJ Reminis, and of course, we got DJ Aftershock in the studios, bro. That that's a popping record. I like that record. Mm-hmm. Really good record. I like it too. Yeah, that's good. It's good. So, um, what was the um, record gets released? Mm-hmm. Um, all these messages start happening. You know, all these offers from X Y Z. So, mm-hmm. I mean, what? Where are you now in terms of 
where you want to go forward? Like, has this opened, you know, like you're saying, it, has it opened doors or it may open doors? I, it's uh, definitely open doors, 100% open doors. Yeah. Man. I mean, you, you know, you put so much hard work into something, it's obviously going to open doors. Yeah. Get the up, huh? they, you know, oh, fair so, enough. It shows in the product. Um, yeah, I mean, the interviews on BBC Asia Network in the UK, it's on Brit Asia TV in the UK, all over Punjab, on the TV channels, PTC, you name it, right? It's on it. Um, now, just coming back to Vancouver from the UK. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's there. right. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. in England a couple of weeks back. Yeah. How'd that go? Good. It was It was more like uh, visit the family with a little one. Yep. And, um, you know, killing two birds. Killing one bird with two stones. Pretty say. much, yeah. I thought I'd confuse one lap down. Confusion. <laughs> Should all be fair. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, yeah. Just came back and now just had an interview with... Um, the lovely Taranam. I, on, I uh, saw the I saw the pics. On on me yeah. now, Mr. Mr. Pioneer DJ, Mr. DJ Reminis. <laughs> on this little uh, show and, of mine, short day, one day, I appreciate it. Every interview is major, right? So, um, and I appreciate you having me on. Hey, man, uh, honor and privilege, honestly. Yeah. Uh, we go way back, man. We've been we've been friends for a minute, so. Yeah, yeah, I I knew you know? when I first came here. I goes, who's the main DJ here, man? Galakar <laughs> Nia, DJ Reminis, I take more DJ and yeah. You know what? Before we start, I do have to say um, some of my memorable moments DJing were definitely when I used to DJ with you. And I'll tell you really? why. Oh. I'll tell you why. Because A, you've got the skills, you had the music knowledge. And every time I DJed with you, it forced me to be in my A game. Oh, really? Yeah. And I, I mean that sincerely. There's no shot against anyone. All I'm saying is just it forced me to be the best that I can. Because you got to remember a lot of the parties I've done where there's an opener whatever right you know you still play whatever you want and then mm -hmm. at some point in the night you get relaxed mm -hmm. and you just start you know you you're in a zone right mm -hmm. which is fine mm -hmm. but when there's someone who's better than you comes on mm -hmm. and then it, it forces you to you know excel your game so i really appreciate that man it really I, it really kept me up to my you know game. what it's it's not it's not the fact that anyone's better than you or anyone better than me at the end of the day you just have to be you know, on your A game on the night of. Yeah, for sure. And your A game doesn't last one hour. It lasts for like three, four hours all the time you're DJing. Yeah. Right. So at the end of the day, no koi word da, no koi chota, but sorry, but here's what, here's what, and this is why I wanted you on the show is because the, for all you people that are looking to start DJing, because, you know, I get questions every day, you know, how do you DJ, how do you do this? And the thing I tell them is, is you got to have your A game because People nowadays, I was in the last 10 years, like, Sonwari Jedi Jantai, they're not stupid. Mm -hmm. They know a good mix from a bad mix, mm -hmm. right? They're getting smarter now because of, you know, social media and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to understand, like, I mean, what's your take, you know, if you got any advice for some young guns here? Well, you know what? DJing's completely changed when it comes to technology, right? I remember when we started DJing, didn't we? Yeah. Vinyl, cassettes. <clears throat> Even some people were DJing with cassettes, man. Yeah. Vinyl. Then it went to what? CDJs. Yep. And then for the, uh, this controller came out, right? You push a button, blah, 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 then syncs everything for you. you press yeah. the sync button, bro. Job done, right? <laughs> Virtual DJ, you know, sync button. Job done, right? Yeah. But um, it takes a bit more then um yeah you know what i've got to say young djs you can grab the two thousand dollar controller you can plug your music in there and let the mixing happen but you can mix but you don't know the music as well at the same time yeah it's right true. it's what you, you can't play. dj without knowing the knowledge of the music and what to play next that's the most important thing but is it it's important for me to understand the history as well mm -hmm. you like you know like i always give props to like like my influences were like bali Saku. He's the only DJ that really influenced me. After mm -hmm. that was probably Punjab BMC, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, on the hip hop world is Dr. Dre, mm -hmm. right? He mm -hmm. started out as a DJ and mm -hmm. like DJ Jazzy Jeff. Those are the four biggest influences for me in terms of the DJing and the music. Mm -hmm. You know, like what, what were your influences? Or my, were your influences? Um, my influence was basically, um, well, let's start from the bottom, right? A couple of random people in the Midlands that were DJs and I just stood there watched them and uh, it just took liking to that what they were doing and they influenced me to uh, you know grab turntables and and play around at home that was the first step second step was music 
Okay. And when 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 I talk about music, one of my like Punjabi MC, yeah, Mr. DJ Vix, who um you know he's done a great job in the UK and he's actually uh, become a friend of yours now, right? He's a good mate of mine. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. must be cool. He's he, I like always say to him like I look up to you. You're my yeah. mentor, and, and and he gives me advice. Even with releasing Mefline, like these are the people I reach out to. Like, bro, how's how's the process? What do we do now, right? Yeah. And, and these guys will help me out, and 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 you know they have a big name there. Yeah. But still humble people. Yeah. And, like, you know, just reach out, and and they're there, right? Yep. You're not gonna know until you ask. So, um, and then Bali Jagpal, I love the Ranja man. Yeah, that was a. That's my favorite song. And Punjabi MCs Mundi at the Bajke. That was my era at um, university. It's good times, man. Yeah, good yeah. music era. Yeah, yeah definitely. So. That's cool, man. Uh, so now, uh, part of my show, I do a couple of segments, mm-hmm. and this is a chance for you to you know connect connect with the viewers because people that listen to the show, are, you know, they they're pretty. They're good in the sense of they want to hear like they want to hear your struggles. They want to hear real stories. They don't want to hear the balle balle this and that. I could, a, I could, I could yeah. write a book if you want to hear my struggles. Hey man, this but is your form. This is for me. This is for you to be able to you know share whatever you want. So one of the segments I have is called the full cheap ones. Basically, mm-hmm. what that is is like you know like a funny story. Like for example, like I was DJing and you know with Juggy and I fell off the stage. Mm-hmm. Right. That's mm-hmm. a you know it's a you know like a funny story. Mm-hmm. So in your journeys as a DJ, I'm sure you got tons. If you don't mind sharing a story. Um, you know, there's the plenty of stories. I mean, when you're in the entertainment industry, in the business, obviously there's so many parties you do every weekend yeah. in front of so many hundreds of people. And there's always obviously some stories, right? But I think a couple of the funny ones, uh, the, the the drunk guys that come up to you <sighs> and they request the most Pissy horrendous off. songs. Like, for example, I, I'm never going to forget this. And this is the one bringing it up. Like, the dance floor's packed. Everybody's having a great time. Guy comes up, gives me a dirty look. I was like, oi! Was yeah, Hanji uncle. Heed la heed. Was giddy heed. The good dance man, the heed. As far as I know, that's a bit of a sad song. That love song, yeah. The yeah, ki katya, ki katya, to me ki heed banana, right? Yeah, yeah. Dance floor's packed. I said, I'm sorry, I can't really play that. Man just got really angry. F this, F that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Walked off the stage, ruined my mood <laughs> in a way. But then they got to continue what you're doing, right? And then there's people that stand there right next to you, which is the most annoying thing. Play my song. I'm like, okay, I'll play it in five minutes. He comes back five minutes later, stands next to me and just watches me DJ. He goes, what's up? He was Ghana ni lai halle. Was Lona Queeni, and he's just standing there watching until Ghana la fe me jana. Really? Yeah. Ghana yeah la we all get it. I, I shouldn't act surprised, man. That, and um, that's why I stopped. Honestly, it got to the point where I just I just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Biggest you know? <laughs> thing: all the DJs who want to be a DJ, um, patience is the biggest virtue, right? And that's oh, hundred percent. Yeah, and I gotta give you credit. You <laughs> you got a very high professionalism, very high and, and, and uh, professionalism, and pa- I I agree with you hundred um, percent. That and I'm being honest on on my show. The reason why I stopped doing this e weddings, the new weddings. Was because like I'm I'm 40 years old now, right? Mm-hmm. So as you get older, you'll find you get crabbier. Mm-hmm. I just I just couldn't take the bullshit anymore. I yeah. just couldn't take it anymore. I'm just, like you know, like we change for them. Mm-hmm. We play their music, mm-hmm. right? We've adopted new technology. Mm-hmm. You know, we've done this for them. Screens, plan that thing, and this and that. But this is never change. Nah, nah. This never si change. Si you know what I mean? So. Right. It is what it is. That's true. Yeah. So let's talk about the roadshow. I really wanted to bring this up. Um, we talked about the setups. <clears throat> setups. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, that's a you know, it's a fairly new trend. I would say last three years, four years. Hundred percent. I yeah. think the. Um, oh hi. Oh, we got a guest. You gonna say hi? You come here first. Come and say hi. Say hi first. Then. Say hi. Say hi in the camera. Come in. Oh. Yeah, we're babysitting today too. Say hi in this mic, and then I'll come. Oh. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> He's so shy. Say hi and then we'll go. Then we'll go. There you go. Are you going to let him DJ? Hmm? No. Hi. No. He's, he's going to do uh, something other, other than DJ. Doctor Barna, okay, doctor? Yeah, like my friend used to say. Hi. Hi. Yeah, Rakeel, yeah. Okay. You want to go? See, it's a family okay. atmosphere here on Desi Beats. Two minutes, two minutes. Two minutes. Family two minutes. atmosphere. He's adorable, bro. Adorable. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, he's he's my uh, he's my little munchkin. So yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we're saying so the setups. Mm-hmm. So what's your take on that whole thing um, in terms of like is it is it working? Like well, you know what? Um, what I'm gonna say is I love doing setups. Okay. Soon as like that's that's what they do in England. Yeah. But the the most um, the challenging part of doing it in Canada is the bride and grooms want to be on the stage. 
Now, I will say this again, and I've been saying it for the last 10 years. Bride and grooms, yes, I love it. You want to be on the stage. But what's the point of being on stage for an hour and a half? What's the point of being on stage at all? We all know it's your wedding. Well, what I want to say is um, the setups are all good and dandy, but you need to have a good DJ behind that setup. Yeah, I, yeah, right? totally. Yeah. So again, music takes uh, presidency over the setup again. Yeah. Like you can have a, a fuck it. Sorry. That's okay. It's all good, man. I curse all the time. Fuck An amazing worry, DJ, right? Yeah. No, sorry. Amazing setup yeah. and a gun. The DJ does not work. Yeah. Yeah. But. A gun set up and an amazing DJ, guess what? Guests are going to go home, they're going to rant about the DJ, yeah. not the setup. How important is that for you t- to make sure the music, like I know it's a stupid question, but it's an important question. Like for me, at the end of the night, if the mape of the reception or the, you know, whoever's not paying the bill, but you know, the mom and dad mm-hmm. or, you know, someone the older lot came up to me and said, Poti did a good job. That for me, I knew I smashed it. Exactly. Like, how do you set your bar? I think the same way, man. I mean, the young generation, you know, sort of the teenagers and the older generation come up to you and say, you know, thank you. Like, you get testimonials at the end of the day, right? Yeah. We always reach out to our clients yeah. afterwards. We say, what do you think of the event? What do you think of the party? Tell us where we went wrong. Yep. And the, the mostly what we, what we hear back is, you know what, you cater to everybody. Which is the young, the old, yep. even my, you know, so I remember some people saying, yeah. I had such a good time. Yeah. Thanks to you guys. Yeah. Right. That's that for us. Pat on the back. And that's, not, that's not easy to do. Right. Like, yeah. can you make that clear? Like, that's not, that's not easy to do. It's not easy to do, but it it's also not- takes a lot of good mic skills. Okay. Yeah. I've, got, I've got to say, yeah, music has got to be on point. But yeah. In, in the UK and, and a lot of DJs here again are doing it is you have to create an atmosphere on the mic where they become your family and they think that you're part of their family and that's when they get up and think okay this guy's like you know he's getting us involved mum me chakko mum chache chakko grab the for them you know chachi everybody on the floor yeah. right and do a dance competition which is another thing we started Right when 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 did I start this dance competition trend oh, thing? Years ago, man. Five years ago, four years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used then, to do them way back, but I stopped doing them. No, I, 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 it works for you. I personally don't like doing them anymore. Yeah, I just just me. So it's yeah. not a hate. I'm just saying. So yeah, are you yeah. still doing them? I'm still doing them. Yeah, okay. yeah, still doing them because uh, people enjoy it, right? Yeah. And um, you have to have the knack of the way you, the way you got to do it as well. Yeah, there's a way to do them. You got to entertain them at the same time. And I can say this. Because I don't care, but most DJs that I've heard them do mm-hmm. don't do it well. I should start a training le- training classes. You should. Yeah, I- I'm telling you. Come to dance off training classes you every should, Friday at my house. You should. <laughs> you should. You laugh, but you should because I've been to some parties and I'm just like I have to walk out. It's embarrassing. Honestly, I like. Uh, I, you know what? At the end of the day, experiment, but don't do it live. That's, that's the message everybody Doing a club Yeah Even 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 though you see UK DJs do it Myself or any other Like good DJs here That can do dance offs I know there's some people here That can do it And they have the knack Of doing it I mean just borrow the video Watch it a couple of times I don't care if you stand behind me Basquedo Harp I'm gonna come and check you out do that. I don't mind I'll teach everybody I, not- you, See you hear this folks This is really important This is how he gives back To the culture He's giving you an open invitation. Doesn't matter which your which crew you're from. It doesn't matter. If, if you want to learn something, if you know, like take them up on it. I find that no one ever takes up the offers. At the end of the day, I'm not going to DJ for the rest of my life. So exactly. at the end of the day, if I can pass my talent on to people, which I already have, I know I have. Yeah, of course you have. You got a whole crew, and they're doing well. Yeah. I mean, I'm still injecting my, you know, yeah. my inje- my blood into them. Right? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So just keep doing what we do, and, and hopefully everybody picks up on it, and there's no embarrassing moments live. Yeah. Right. That's cool, man. So I've got one of your favorite tracks queued up, Munir mm-hmm. Tabachkani. Let's play that and we'll come back. And uh, yeah, sweet. Cool. Sweet. All right. We're back. This is Dissy Beats. I got DJ Aftershock in the house, man. Fafrigal, how are you? Fafrigal. Okay, so, you know, I we all know the struggles that DJ goes through all the bullshit people you gotta deal with on a nightly basis mm-hmm. and I know recently you've had issues in your own camp deception in your camp uh, we don't need to go to the details but um, you know let's take that experience in the sense of you know what'd you learn from that and how'd you kind of come out of it because I, I know it, it, it wounded you pretty <clears throat> deeply right because you know we've had the conversations we've talked about it you know you actually called me and wanted my take <laughs> and I appreciate it I respect that you know mm-hmm. and I did what I could but um, well, there's not much you can do about that. I mean, you have to just, uh, you know, head up, move forward. 
Yep. Um, the way it was dealt with was uh, it can get ugly if you don't deal with it properly. But um, at the end of the day, we all have a business to run, right? Yep. Um, so it takes. You know, like, you build trust with somebody, right? Yep. So, you know how they say, like, it takes a second to break it, but forever to build it? Yeah. Um, So true. So, you know, judging by that saying, you know, that is something that I experienced and and, and I can can live by that. That is 100%. That's what it means. Yeah. And I I feel that, you know, emotionally as well. But, I mean, to this day, and you just brought this up right now, it still hurts. And, it, and I don't know when it will stop hurting, but it still hurts. Wow, okay. Yeah. So uh, That was my next question, is how you... It, it still bugs me, and um, it continues to bug me, and I don't know when it will stop. I don't know when it will be, you know. Um, I, I think that's a tough one, because you're both in the public eye. You're both, you're both you know, prominent in the game right now, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, so I... You know, I don't mean to like shit on your parade. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, like, I guess it's just something you just got to deal with, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's easy to do things that you don't mean. But the thing is, um, for the other person to recuperate and start building again from fresh is very tough. And yep. obviously 2014 was a, was a, even 2013, I would say, um, was it was, and 2014, the whole year, um, business went on as usual, but... DJ Aftershock was a different person. Wow. Right? Okay. Yeah, so um, can you kind of can you kind of explain that or like um, well, mentally rebuilding the team was 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 the first. Thing, okay. Yeah. Sure. Right? On the business side. Yeah. yeah what about um, you personally? Like, what were you going through? Uh, personally, it just came, I just came to the point where you know, even my best friend, I was doubting him at one point. Oh wow. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Um, so it, it does get a bit difficult and emotional but the thing is um, you start doubting everybody around you and you feel like you can't trust anybody even family sometimes Yeah. so at the end of the day um, I've changed and I've taken more of a professional route okay um, yeah everybody's your friend everybody wants to be your bro <laughs> how's it going bro how's it going bro? that pisses me off man right you know but the thing is I'm like yeah it's good mate how are you yeah you're right. Yeah? yeah that's all it is right so um Keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. I don't go by that anyway. <laughs> I said it. It's all good. But... I, don't, I don't go by that. <laughs> no, no, anyway, that's, that's what it is. So, yeah. I am who I am, right? Yep. Yep. And I like to avoid confrontation. So No, that's good. It's a great habit to be in. Right? Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I'm in the business where I just cause controversy. Not on purpose. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, you know, I, my whole thing is... And we had this conversation off air. Is I feel the industry is just fake. It's a facade. Like everyone, like people, like all these young singers be like, I want to get in the game. You know, I want to be like so-and-so or I want to be like a DJ Aftershock. I'm like, have you actually sat down and talked to the guy? Mm-hmm. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. sit down and do your homework first because it's not, it's like he, it took him 10 years really mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. get to where you are at this point. And, mm-hmm. you, you're, and you've just touched the surface. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, we yeah. can agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've yeah. been successful. You know, you made some cake. That's not the point, right? Mm-hmm. But in terms of your professional career, right? I've been doing this for twenty five plus years, and mm-hmm. I have not accomplished not even twenty five percent of what I wanted to do. Yeah, you have. No, what about those mixtapes, bro. Yeah, but the garne gune kade ya. No, but baby, for, right? But to which pa ke rakhi photo yeah, mitra di hai? But Come I, on. but I knew where to stop, right? Mm-hmm. I knew where my limits are. Yeah, I tried. I failed, right? Yeah, I'm the first one to admit it. But you know, like you know, like it's you, not. You know, like I, 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 I wouldn't say failure. I just, I just had like some ridiculous ambitions. Like I, I wanted to play with G, you know, I want to play a gig with Jazzy Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, Mm -hmm. like so. You know, in terms of, you know, you've you you've already got you've got a successful business going. Mm -hmm. Um, you've got the single out now. Like what's 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 your what's your accomplishments now for the next two, three, five? Um thing is the DJing thing that when I started here in Canada it took off like you know crazy like it the, the feedback was like oh my god who's this guy he's in town blah 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 he's Bloody doing British this accent. we want to book this guy and you know it took off from a year and it was done that was it Aftershock came in, into the into the picture people are probably hating me oh there's that, a lot of hate right, right? And let's be real there's a lot of hate because you came in it just went wham like just slapped everyone know, in the face and I'm face. sorry and I apologize to everybody I don't need to apologize you man. know um, it's just me doing what I love and, and, and if you want to hate me for that then I'm sorry it's right? just DJ but, insecurity um, yeah so <laughs> after you know you sort of uh, 
you know, got to the point where the Upshot Roadshow formed and the DJs are doing well and, and formed an alliance. And then what's next? People ask me, well, you should release a song, man. You should do this, do that, do this. And I'm like, okay, yeah, well, what is next for me? Yeah. And that's when Monarchy came into the picture and then Mefla came out. And now, um, I'm not going to name the artists, but you're in for a surprise this year. That's cool, man. A couple of artists. I love surprises. Um, yeah, so I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, it's uh, it's going to be happening now. That's cool. Uh, you know, it's, it's great. It's, you know, yeah, you're born and bred in the UK. Mm-hmm. That's fine. We all get it. We can all tell from your voice. But I mean, you are, you know, but whether you're your, from, your roots are here now. Whether you're from England, yeah. Australia, New Zealand, India, yeah. Canada, right? I mean, if you're getting asked, for example, right? I got asked to DJ Rahat for the Ali Khan's after party in Vegas. Cool. Right? It's not because I'm from England. Yeah. It's because of what I've done and what yeah. I've eventually sort of, you know, the world yeah. knows about it, right? For sure. So... I was privileged to go over to Vegas and DJ Rahat for the for the Elephant's after party yeah. outside at Treasure Island, and then not only him, but you know I think you know I was I was honoured to DJ Gadas with Gadas Man back ages ago when he came for India against Whitecaps, you know. Yeah. I was I was honoured then. Yeah. Right, and it just happens. These things happen. And Tarminder and um, Sunny Diol and Bobby yeah. Diol's up in a movie released here. Yeah, you've done some. I did the after party that. Yeah, you've done some and good gigs, man. And these things is when you feel, okay, you know what? I'm privileged. I'm honored yeah. to be there. Those are the biggest highlights. That's cool, man. Let's talk about, now let's talk about um, talk about your highlights. Mm-hmm. You've done a full cheap one. Part of the show, I do a bakwas moment. So, bakwas. for example, like, you know, like that one, the story you told is kind of like a borderline full cheap one bakwas because I know you want to deck him. That's pretty yeah. cool. I know you want to hit him, right? But like <sighs> a moment where you thought, what? Just bakwas. Like you couldn't believe it. There must be something <laughs> in your journeys, you know, like um, someone spilled some shadab on your thing or whatever, but you know. There are a couple of uh, stories, but I don't know if I should say them. You can say whatever you want um, on this show, man. Although you know the funny, funniest thing I remember again, it's it, it's, it's it's to do with DJing. It's is when you know when the ladies come and do the juggle, right? Yeah, the horny, the, yeah, yeah, horny on the head, right? Yeah. I remember a phrase of you. There's some steps you got to walk up, right? Yeah. This one lady, she went up the steps with a juggle on her head, so her, she can't use her hands. Like she yeah. used, went up the steps, she completely slipped, right? So her first step on the dance floor was slip forward, and she fell flat on her backside. Ooh. Like you sitting posture, yeah, like this with a jug on her head. She couldn't get up. How is she gonna get up? <laughs> she got a jug on her head. That just completely, basically, just threw me off. Of the, oh my god, did that just really happen? Oh man, I mean, that was just GoPros. Was, that's what we needed them back then. GoPro, man. Yeah, technology these days. Yeah, man. But um, you know what? I uh, who does me? Yeah, bakwas. Me, uh, but I, I get bakwas every. Day. I um, I posted a. Uh, a video recently of um, I showed you the video about young Surrey Jackson the grammar I gotta watch that I gotta watch that so anyways the whole point of my podcast we're just trying to give two sides of the story so mm-hmm. I'll say the story and mm-hmm. I'll say you know both sides right mm-hmm. so and I did the podcast acting like a Surrey Jack so like I was talking like 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 you know what I mean like I was just saying stupid stuff mm-hmm. so the hate I got like the utter bakwas I got on the comments on really? some of this stuff was ridiculous like look you're so annoying and people just completely missed the point mm-hmm. but I figured out one thing uh-huh. the ones that were commenting mm-hmm. about my whatever are the ones that talk like that <laughs> that's what I figured out so there you guys go that's man. hilarious that's yeah. hilarious yeah but uh, you know what man I appreciate you taking the time out yeah no uh, problem appreciate man. you bringing your son over he's uh, you know your son I mean how, is he a proud proud son is he proud yeah. of you does he say daddy play Mefla one more time he um yeah he he basically when the song comes on he's like oh dada song dada song that's so cool and right? um he tries to sing it sometimes and you know what I always hear it on TV on the radio people still whatsapping me you're sending yeah. me pictures and I'm like oh, I'm done with it this is <laughs> Mefla 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 and anyways yeah. but speaking of Mefla yeah. we have I forgot to, I completely forgot about this we have the after party hey man go for it this um, is your mic bro we you have, promote whatever you want well, tijake, all the people who didn't like what I said well, tijake, you know, yeah, I'll take Jack Court. He's gonna be there too. I'll be there. I'm gonna beat him up too. Um, so basically, we're gonna do the uh, official Mefla single release party um, at Privé nightclub, Prive nightclub. Did the magic to see Privé, Privé, Prive. Sorry, nightclub. sorry, Suki. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the Plaza of Nations. It's it's. it's oh right, okay, yeah, yeah. Plaza of Nations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be um, Mint. 
Yeah, the one on the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a big. Yeah, so a good March thirteenth, Friday. Um, yeah, it's gonna go down. Man. Yo, bro, like, can I spin a set, bro? Yeah. Can I bring my records, bro? Can uh, I spin a set? <laughs> I'm not gonna be spinning. I'll tell you that though. I'm not gonna be spinning. <laughs> just be chilling out. But yeah, I mean, another thing. Yeah, a lot of people they see me, but they don't come and say hi. That really annoys me. I mean, I'm still the same. I'm a human being. I will say hi back. I don't no, have, you're not. I don't have any awkward. I so had to call, like, when I just to book you today, I had to go through your manager, your manager's blah, oh, blah, then, blah. Then, then. But, uh, I'm the agent, I'm the admin, yeah. I'm everything. No, but yeah, true, don't, be say, don't be shy, just come say hi, and, you know, we don't yeah. fight. I mean, we're artists, but, you know, we, we love what we do, but at the end of the day, banda, 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 and yeah, no, uh, for, we're humans enough, at the end of the day. Hanji, speaking of banda, yeah, I gotta tell me who your favorite team favorite team, soccer team, in the, in the mic? Southampton. There you go. Southampton, man. I appreciate it, bro. Thanks for coming out, man. Um, I'm sorry to say, you know, Southampton's kind of dipped in the. um, I don't know. I was rooting for them. I really was rooting for them. I was. Um, But it is what it is. It's all good. We're not actually any better anyway. So, (laughs) Wicked. DJ Aftershock in the house, man. Make sure you go cop that single and make sure you go check him out on. On March 13th. Cheers, guys.